So what role do environmental toxins play in the initiation of autoimmune disease? We saw Dr. Aristo Vodjani at the conference and we sat down for a few minutes to ask him exactly that. So Dr. Vajdani, why do we have such a massive increase in the number of autoimmune diseases in America? According to Autoimmune Disease Association, 53 million Americans are suffering from autoimmune diseases. And according to National Institutes of Health, genes are responsible for one third of autoimmune diseases. The triggers are responsible for the other two thirds of autoimmune diseases. So the environmental factors are playing a significant role in the induction of autoimmune diseases. Obviously, we are doing something today that we didn't do 50 years ago that could be a reason why autoimmune diseases are under rise. So what are some of the common environmental triggers that you see causing autoimmune disease? Toxic chemicals in the environment, such as uh, formaldehyde, isocyanide, uh, uh, bisphenol A from the plastic, um, food additives, uh, food colorings, nanoparticles. In fact, an article published in the Journal of Autoimmune Reviews showed that due to addition of some of these factors into the food, mm -hmm. there is direct correlation between the amount of some of these new material we are consuming today that we did not consume 20 years ago, 50 years ago, those, there is direct correlation between autoimmunity and the usage of these uh, toxic chemicals. So the more toxic chemicals are introduced into our environment, the more toxic chemicals get into our body. So there is a notion out there, unfortunately, that we think, and many scientists think, that chemicals are in and out. That may be correct in 80% of the cases, yeah. but in other 20%, it is enough, the 20% of the chemicals, not to get out from our body, but bind to our tissue and set the stage for development of autoimmune diseases. That's the mechanism of autoimmune disease. So chemicals are not in and out. It is enough small amount of chemicals to bind, bind to our tissue and induce autoimmunity, which more than 100 of, of those autoimmune diseases are well recognized these days. Doctor, it seems like in the last couple of years, there's been more of a focus on the fact that some of these autoimmune diseases are reversible. What are your thoughts on reversing autoimmune disease? Find the triggers. The trigger could be chemical in one person, infection in another person, could be gum infection, could be bacteria in the gut, or certain foods such as gluten, dairy, other food. By identifying them, identifying them, and then by removing the triggers from the environment of the patient, these kind of clinicians will be successful in some cases to reverse the course of autoimmune disease. So the message is here that the earlier autoimmune reactivities versus autoimmune disease, reactivity is when the patient is making antibody, but doesn't have loss of functionality. When the patient is losing functionality, maybe it's too late. We can only stop it. But if we can detect at the early stage autoimmune diseases, that's my job that develop biomarkers for that. Yeah. Then we can identify the triggers, remove the triggers, and the prevent progression of autoimmune reactivity to full-blown autoimmune disease. So there is window of opportunity of probably five years to 10 years. You detect antibody first, identify the triggers, remove the triggers, and then that patient is not going to progress to full-blown autoimmune disease. So the bottom line is detect, remove, and repair. That's my really final message for prevention of autoimmune diseases.